tie these. Just seems like a waste of time. There's this curl that keeps falling down. I don't think it's that one. But there's one that keeps falling down and it makes me look like Clark Kent. Or Superman. No, Clark Kent. Does Clark Kent have the curl or does Superman have the curl? And I mean, that's what makes the biggest difference, isn't it? That's how you can't tell them apart. I can't remember. Anyway. Hi, how are you? Okay, excellent. I am fabulous, thank you for asking. I feel amazing today because yesterday I had, I was about to say I had a hangover and I didn't. I had a migraine and oh my god, they just seem to be not getting worse but they just seem to always, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm saying. Today's going to be a difficult day to speak because of the migraine yesterday and all the drugs I've taken to get rid of the migraine. It was a bad one. Um, it was awful. So today I feel amazing because it's gone. It started at about, wait, what day is it today? Well, whilst I'm recording this, it's Saturday. And so the migraine was on Friday. It started on Thursday night at about 11 o'clock and it didn't go until last night, so Friday night at around 11 o'clock. So it was about 24 hours that I had the migraine. So today I'm all woo, but probably can't talk properly. So we'll see. I probably can't see properly neither, which doesn't help when I'm gonna be looking at my notes. Oh, my cheeks are all rosy because I went for a run. Anyway, today, this is gonna be a long edit. Okay. Today, I would like to give you my best and worst advice. I don't want to give you best and worst advice, I want to tell you what the best and worst advice is that I've ever been given. I'm going to start with the worst because I have some ideas, theories if you will, as to how we handle advice. Okay, so when I've followed life advice in the past, it's always been something along the lines of choosing to not do something. I have been advised against taking a certain route or path. So the, the advice that I've been given, the worst advice I've been given, I can't remember like specific, like people give you, you know, like snippets and nuggets of um, like quotes and stuff like that that give you good advice. I can't think of the word. I knew that I wouldn't be able to think of words today. People have given me advice on things and in my opinion now looking back on it, it was bad advice. So I was advised to not go into acting when I was younger. I was advised to not apply for the police force. I was advised to not go into forensics, not go into archaeology. And in my naivety at that time, I just assumed that they were telling me these things for good reason and that that was, you know, these people generally were older than me and so I thought, well, they clearly know what they're talking about and so I won't do those things. And that now I see was bad advice. They were opinions which I took as advice. So the reasons that were given, acting isn't a stable career. Forensics don't get, so it was um, crime scene investigation. Crime scene investigation doesn't get paid a lot, which at it didn't even matter to me, I just wanted to do it, but then I was advised against doing it, and so I thought, well, don't do it then. Don't go into the police force, because all you do is do paperwork. Don't go into archaeology, because there's no jobs, and there's, you don't get paid much. But again, it was, I should have dismissed those things and thought, but I want to do these things. I don't, it's, it doesn't matter about the money and the, the jobs and the what have you. I should have just followed my my heart instead of listening to the advice of these people. So like I say, there's no specific piece of advice. It was just, I, I, I don't really know if they, if you'd class it as advice that these people gave me. 
like I said, it's more of an opinion. But they were advising me on what to do, I suppose. So it, it fits as advice. But I wish that at that time, I'd had the confidence that I have now to say, whoa, I don't care what you say. I want to go and be an archeologist and not make any money, but I didn't. There is also an element of when people give you advice like that, of them projecting their own fears onto you. So for instance, if some, when someone advised me, when the person advised me to not go into acting because it's not stable, they could have potentially wanted to do something along those lines themselves, but they were too scared to take that chance. And so now they have that fear about those kinds of jobs where they think, well, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that because it's too unpredictable and it's those kind of things, that kind of advice that kind of ruins people's prospects. I mean, I was very young when that person told me to not go into acting. I was 16 and so I just, just it was a careers counsellor person at school. So I just assumed, listen to the careers counsellor, they know what they're talking about. And looking back, I shouldn't have listened to them. I should have just done what I wanted to do. And I think... It could probably be the person that advised me to against crime scene investigation was a tutor at college and her daughter was, I think her daughter was at university doing a degree in some kind of forensic, I think it was forensic linguistics. And I think she possibly was projecting her fears of her, wanting her daughter to do well and not wanting her to stay at the level of crime scene investigation and wanting to go further. But then she was projecting that onto us, her students, which is not good because we need crime scene investigators. It's, you know, it doesn't matter that you're not being paid hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. To some people that matters, but to others, if you want to be a crime scene investigator, well then it's not the money. Obviously you need the money from the job but the, um, the pride and the job satisfaction that you get is completely different to the money side of it, if that makes sense. I also think that many of us are guilty of using, ad using advice as an excuse sometimes. We will pick out the bits that we like, that we want to hear, and we will go with that we'll ignore the bits that might mean we have to make a decision of our own and we don't want to do that because that makes things difficult. We want to blame, even if it's inwardly, we want to blame someone else for our decisions and you can't do that. You've got to make decisions for yourself, you've got to take responsibility for making de decisions for yourself because that's life. You can't just go along taking the little bits of this, that and the other and making life easy because eventually something's going to catch up with you and you're going to have to make a decision for yourself. I really like the quote, be careful whose advice you buy, but be patient with those who supply it. I wrote it down because I thought I'd get it wrong. Yes, be careful, be careful whose advice you buy, but be patient with those who supply it. And that is from the fabulous sunscreen song by Baz Luhrmann. And I do actually believe that you could probably just live your life from the advice given in that song. It's amazing, it's brilliant. There's so many excellent things to take away from it. I'm gonna link it in this video, in the description, because I think everybody should listen to that song and you will always get something from it. No matter how many times you listen to it, you'll suddenly go, oh yeah. Why do I keep comparing myself to supermodels in magazines when I am not a supermodel in a magazine? So you'll do that a lot. Unless you're already a supermodel, then maybe you do compare yourself to other supermodels. So I've gone over a bit of worst advice that I've been given and how we should and maybe should not follow advice or we should take care of the advice that's being offered to us and try and don't just, don't just take it and go, okay, yes, I'll do that. Or, okay, no, I'm not gonna do that. Take it and think, who is the person that's offering this advice to me? What circumstances do they have in their life that might depend on what advice they're offering me? Because a lot of their 
fears and um, anxieties can sometimes come across in the advice that's given. If, they're, if they themselves are worrying about a life-changing decision at the same time as you, and they're advising you on it, it's not necessarily going to be good advice. I mean, it might help to talk things through with that person, but you should generally get different advice from a selection of people. And again, you don't have to listen to any of it. You can make this decision completely on your own. You are allowed to do that. So now I'm gonna go on to some good advice that I've been given. I know for a fact that my Nana Lil gave me advice probably every single day. She couldn't help herself. And I can't for the life of me remember any of it. I can remember silly little things or when I'll be pottering about doing something I'll suddenly think oh I'm doing this because Nana Lil told me to do it that way and sometimes it's like little hints and tips and life hacks as, you, as we call them these days but it is still advice and it still helps me in my life. And so from Nana Lil one piece of advice that I remember from her, I'm not entirely sure of the origin of this. I did google it but there's a lot, there's a couple of um, conflicting, what's the word? Conflicting, there's a couple of conflicting instances. That's not the word but I'll, I'll remember the word when I'm editing this later. It'll be very annoying. So this was something that my Nana Lil used to say a lot. Never cast a clout until May is out. And I always took that to mean that you shouldn't hang your washing out until May's over because there could still be, because the weather could still be shit. It's actually something, well, apparently, according to these differing things online, one of them was um, something to do with farmers, I think it said, but also the meaning, it could mean that you shouldn't put all your winter clothes away before the end of May, which that rhymes as well. We could change it to that and then we'd know what it means. So it could mean that. That does make more sense because sometimes you want to hang your washing out just to air it. Also, back then, you didn't have a choice. You you hung your washing out, didn't you? I presume, because where else would you? couldn't put it in the dryer. They didn't have a dryer. But I just, it, it always reminds me, if I'm hanging my washing out on a day that's not necessarily a great, today actually, because it's quite cold outside even though it's August. So today would be a great example of that That saying would come to mind if I was hanging my wash now. It doesn't make sense because it's after May, but you know, the world doesn't make sense, especially this year, because this year is a stupid piece of shit. However, I am going completely off track. So that one was from Nana Lil. She always told me to keep things to the front. Basically, always have your cupboards fully stocked. So you've got to have your flour and your pasta and your rice and your tins of soup and tin tomatoes and corned beef and tuna and, you know, things that you can use in case there's an apocalypse. I think she was more along the lines of, if you need to ration again, at least you've got some food. But mine has always been in case of the apocalypse and Nana Lil did not like that because I referred to Jesus as being a zombie and she thought it was ridiculous and it made her quite angry actually but never mind so a lot of life advice that I now heed is from Nana Lil and it's good life advice what is this bit of hair doing aside from the fabulous things that I have taken away from my amazing Nana Lil one of the best pieces of advice that always sticks in my mind was given to me by my uncle John and it was in regards to a relationship at the time which was not great but it kept, it was one of those that kept ending and I kept going back to it and da 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 da, you know that stupid cycle that you get into. And he sent me a card and in that card he had written, the hardest lesson in life to learn is which bridges to cross and which to burn. And at the time, it was kind of, I was very stubborn about it. And I thought, no, I'm not gonna follow that advice. I'm not gonna pay any attention to what you're saying. But as I've got older and paid more attention to it, it's always stuck in my mind. And it is something that I refer to 
because there are there are times when even if it's it's not necessarily relationships it could be friendships it could be jobs it could be anything in your life that you that you have some kind that you have some kind of relationship with and you need that it is hard to decide whether you cross that bridge and carry on on that path or if you burn that bridge and say that's have done with it and that's it does not serve me anymore I do not need that in my life I don't need that bridge I don't need to get over there I don't need that's that's gone it is one of the hardest things to do but and I don't think it gets any easier neither because like I say it can be used across so many different levels of relationship it is something that we all need to learn how to do and also learn that you are allowed to do that as well is there's, there's you don't have to keep anything in your life that doesn't make you feel good you can get you can stop any relationship even family members which people find very difficult to do because there's this preconception that you need you need to stay in contact with your family and you have to spend time with them if you don't get along with somebody in your family that's that's fine you just limit the time that you spend with them and if you are able well then you don't have them in your life at all you need to focus on what is right for you what is right for them if you're if they are a toxic person in your life you learn to burn that bridge and that's okay so i hope that i have shed some light onto some advice for you um i do think that that piece of advice given to me by my uncle john is something that will stick with me forever he has no idea that that's all you probably can't even remember sending that to me but i do it was many many years ago and i'll never forget it in fact i've still got the card so if you have enjoyed what you have heard today please let me know comment in the comments wherever they may be and send me a message and let me know your best life advice or best advice in general and the worst advice you'd ever be you've ever been given because i'd love to hear it and everyone else wants to read it and i will see you next week and this week now as this video goes out i will be on my way to liverpool i think for exciting things so you can look forward to that too Okay, I love you, bye.